Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ, and after a lengthy journey through Hoenn, we finally arrived at what will be our last episode. Taking down Sydney, Phoebe, and Glacia was incredibly tough, so hopefully everything gets a little easier for the finale. Our first opponent today is the Elite Force final member, Drake. Like all of the others, he's put together a team of five, so that's how many cards we need to draw. We're mainly looking for ice types here. Let's see. For the last Elite Four battle, we'll be using the team of Mewtwo. Okay, that should do it. Sea King, Ivysaur, Duskull, and Natu. If we didn't just draw Mewtwo first, I'd be pretty worried here, but I think we'll be okay. We've still got a couple of Blizzard TMs hanging around from the department store, so that's going to be our main move. Let's check out the rest. Up first, we've got Cola the Mewtwo, who's at level 52 with the moves Blizzard, Barrier, Calm Mind, and Thunder. We used a PP Max that I think I got in the Trick House on Blizzard so that we'd have enough just to be sure. Triton the Sea King's up next at level 54 with Supersonic, Horn Attack, Horn Drill, and Blizzard. An Oko move and a powerful super effective attack is going to make using Sea King difficult for me. I don't like that much choice. Shido the Ivysaur is up third at level 53, and his moveset's made up of Strength, Growth, Synthesis, and Sleep Powder. Koopa the Duskull is also at 53, and he's equipped with Blizzard, Confuse Ray, Curse, and Will-O-Wisp. Finally, we've got Royal the Natu at level 55, and he's got Psychic, Wish, Confuse Ray, and Teleport on hand. This is the most confident I've felt in, like, five episodes. Let's get into it. Drake starts out with his Shell Gun, and we lead off with Mewtwo. That's basically the end. By starting out with a weak Pokemon, Drake is letting Cola take complete control. For some reason, the final Elite Four member likes to begin most battles with a couple of rounds of Protect, which is just a terrible strategy. At best, you make it to the third turn right back at square one, and at worst, you've just let a Mewtwo set up a couple of Calm Mind. Cola's Blizzard put Shelgon so far out of commission that he may never battle again. From here, the only real question is about Mewtwo's accuracy. Flygon's the next target and Cola answers emphatically, scoring a direct hit for an easy one-shot. Drake calls on his Salamence next, and Mewtwo's Blizzard knocks another opponent out of the sky to make it three KOs. Altaria really doesn't want to come into battle, but after being forced out, it's frozen solid by another perfect Blizzard, which leaves the final Elite Four member with only one. It is Kingdra who doesn't actually have a weakness to Ice, and we want to let the whole team have a run in the battle, so we recall Cola. We call on Natu first, who gets front row seats to Kingdra's Dragon Dance before the Water Dragon spits out a thick layer of smoke, blinding him. Royal gets lucky with a wild Confuse Ray though, which succeeds, leaving Kingdra confused. That's his job done, so we switch out once more, this time sending in Ivysaur. Drake calls for a Body Slam and Kingdra breaks through confusion, leaping out of the water to land with a thud on top of Shido. The Evolved Grass starter is too slow to react, and when Kingdra snaps out of confusion altogether, it's all over for him. Another Body Slam leaves Ivysaur hammered into the battlefield, out for the count and unable to battle. We throw out another bowl, bringing Duskull into the mix for the first time, and after a Dragon Dance, it's his curse that puts Drake under pressure. Every turn, a quarter of Kingdra's HP will disappear, and there's no switching available to rid him of the curse. Having done his job, Koopa is replaced by Triton, so now our whole team has been involved. Seeking is hit by a Surf that was meant for Duskull, which is more refreshing than dangerous, but the Body Slam that follows is a little less enjoyable. It leaves Triton paralyzed, but he still manages to attack with Blizzard, which combines with Curse to leave Kingdra right on the cusp of fainting. Drake uses a full restore as we call for Seeking to use Horn Drill, but although he breaks through the paralysis, it misses. Another Body Slam eliminates Triton, taking us down to three, but with Curse still in effect, it's surely only a matter of time. Royal returns to battle, but Dragon Dance has worked really well. In a flash, Kingdra crushes the Pocono Swallow, leaving us with only two. Duskull comes back in next, and after Curse inflicts a little more damage, he's washed away by Surf, leaving us in a one-on-one. -on -one. Obviously, we weren't playing this as tactically astute as possible, but all of a sudden we may be in danger of losing this one. Mewtwo returns to battle as we learn that four quarters don't always make a hole in the world of Pokémon. Kingdra survives the curse, and Drake brings out another full restore, so now we're in a full health one-on-one. -on -one. And Kingdra's had his stats boosted. Mewtwo misses Thunder to start things, so now I'm really worried. Kingdra lands another Body Slam, causing paralysis once more, which prevents Cola from attacking. Another Body Slam takes Mewtwo into one-shot range before it finally comes to its senses and breaks through the paralysis to score a direct hit on Thunder. That finishes off Drake, but he got surprisingly close in the end considering how simple our run to Kingdra ended up being. I'm sure Cola could have swept here if we'd stayed in, but you know that I always want to use my entire team if at all possible. It's probably safe to say the rest of our team here may have preferred staying out of it. Alright, that's now three consecutive Elite Four members who have left us with just a single Pokémon in one-shot range, so that's not a great sign as we head for a battle with the champion. 
we finally made it to the first 6 on 6 battle of the series. Personally, I'm more of a fan of diverse champion teams than solo type ones, especially for this series, but Wallace's team is unquestionably a good one. Any electro type Pokemon would be very much appreciated, but I know we basically never get what's required. All of my luck for this series happens in-game. Okay, for the first time in Hoenn, let's draw a team of six. To see if we'll make it into the Hall of Fame, we'll be using Corsola, Starmie, Golduck, full on water type showdown, or not, Persian, Magmar, and Arcanine. Okay, three water types and two fire types isn't exactly a strong matchup against a water type specialist, but it could maybe be worse. At least we've drawn a strong group of Pokemon typings aside, this team looks pretty powerful. Let's have a look at the movesets. First up is Anthozoa the Corsola. At level 57, the Water Rock type has the moves Surf, Mirror Coat, Spike Cannon, and Ancient Power. I'm a big fan of Corsola, but she's not a great Pokemon to have here. Eridani the Starmie's up next, a couple of levels lower at 55, and Thunderbolt, Recover, Confuse Ray, and Thunder make up its moveset. We're going all out there. Starmie's an electric type as far as I'm concerned. Kyuga the Golduck's up next at level 56, and her moveset's made up of Surf, Screech, Disable, and Blizzard. Not super useful, but with limited TM options, this was about as good as I could do. Siam the Persian's our second level 56, and she's equipped with Thunder, Screech, Faint Attack, and Slash. Another unconventional electric type, but this has to be our strategy. Rami the Magmar's our final level 56, and he's got Flamethrower, Smokescreen, Confuse Ray, and Sunny Day. I'm not sure how much use he'll be, but Smokescreen, Confuse Ray, and Sunny Day could all come in handy. Finally, we have Pyroki the Arcanine at level 58, and his moveset consists of Extreme Speed, Roar, Bite, and Fire Blast. Alright, this is a strong team. I think we can do this. Let's get into it. The championship match against Wallace begins with Waylord facing off against Corsola. Knowing Waylord's affinity for small pink Pokemon, Anthozoa can breathe a sigh of relief because thankfully they don't share a breeding group. Waylord starts the battle with an ungainly rain dance while Corsola strikes with Ancient Power. It's not too damaging, but Anthozoa does get an across the board stat boost, which will definitely help. Predicting an impending water spout, we call for Mirror Coat, which successfully bounces back the attack, leaving Waylord in red health. Wallace uses a full restore to keep Waylord in the match as Corsola sends another series of stones crashing into him. Instead of risking another hit, the champion recalls his first Pokemon and replaces him with Whiskash. The ancient power aimed at Waylord connects with Whiskash, and as it's not very effective, it barely leaves a mark. Anthozoa's speed boost allows her to attack once more, and the surf she summons leaves Whiskash deep in red health. The water ground type fires the same move right back, which finishes off Corsola, but I take back everything I said. What a performance! Unfortunately, she didn't finish off either of her opponents, but taking two members of the champion's team into red health is no easy task. We send in Arcanine to knock off that last bit of Whiskash's HP with extreme speed and level up the match. Wallace sends in Ludicolo next, which seems a bit odd against Pyroki, but it works for us. Fire Blast knocks Ludicolo off his feet, taking him below half health as he spits back a Leech Seed, which Arcanine easily dodges. Hoping to finish things quickly, Pyroki darts in close, slamming into Ludicolo with extreme speed, but for the third time, one of Wallace's Pokemon survives in red health. Directing a massive wave at Arcanine, Ludicolo thinks it's all over, but he takes the hit well and counters with extreme speed once more. That knocks out the partial grass type to give us our first lead of the match. Waylord is sent back in, and this looks to be the end of Arcanine. One last explosive extreme speed lands before Waterspout crits Pyroki to tie things up again. We want to use our whole team here, so call on Magmar next, who starts things off with a Confuse Ray. Waylord hits himself in confusion, but before Rami can move, the champion uses a second full restore. We weren't planning to attack anyway, instead calling for Magmar to set up Sunny Day and with his turn in hand, confuse Waylord once more. When Wallace calls for Rain Dance, we've got our wish. Rami spits out some smoke as Waylord hits himself again and then returns to his ball. A job well done. Persian replaces him and gets to watch on as the confusion strikes again before unleashing a thunder that cannot miss thanks to Rain Dance. It's a critical hit that blows away Waylord, taking Wallace down to three. Tentacruel's up next for the champion and he enters to another clap of thunder that strikes, leaving him paralyzed. That locks him in place, but the rain stops and Siam can't even hit a stationary target. Without the rain, thunder goes wildly off course and Tentacruel, sensing an opening, blasts Persian with a hydro pump. Siam then sends another thunder wide of the mark as Tentacruel's jet of water hits nothing but fresh air. Finally, at the third time of asking, Persian connects with thunder and the paralysis keeps Tentacruel from countering. Another successful thunder leaves Tentacruel with just a handful of hit points remaining as he fires wide again with Hydro Pump. 
Another full restore stops Slash from earning Siam her second KO, but it deals enough damage that we can call it quits with Thunder. While Tentacruel recovers, another Slash lands, leaving the Jellyfish one shot from fainting. Hydro Pump just cannot touch Siam. She puts Tentacruel out of her misery with a final Slash, but I think they'll both just be glad to put that one behind them. It was pretty embarrassing for both. Whilst his penultimate Pokemon is Gyarados, and Persian really saved up all of her luck for this one. Another thunderclap sounds in the sky above and Gyarados is struck, leaving him weak and paralysed. Sadly, he breaks through to counter with Earthquake, which annihilates Siam, leaving us in a 3 on 2. We send in Starmie next, as Wallace uses a fourth full restore. It makes no difference to Eridani though, who sends a thunderbolt crashing into the quad-week Gyarados, earning an easy knockout and leaving the champion with only one. Milotic is sent in and we also make a switch because Golduck hasn't seen any action yet. After being badly poisoned by Toxic, Kyuga sends a blizzard at Milotic, but it's not very effective. We were just hoping to freeze him, but no such luck. We continue on with that strategy as Milotic fires back with Surf, and just before the poison wipes are out, Golduck succeeds in freezing Milotic. It was really the final action in securing our victory. Starmie returns to the field and attacks with Thunderbolt, and when that's not enough to defrost the champion's ace, strikes again. The second Thunderbolt wipes out the frozen Milotic, handing us the win with Magmar and Starmie surviving at full health. Every single team member played their part here though. We absolutely needed the strong team we got. As Wallace seemed happy to spend his life savings on full restores, we needed some heavy hitters. Alright, we've earned our spot in the Hall of Fame and rolled the credits, but there is one battle remaining in Pokemon Emerald. After taking down the Elite Four and Champion, we can head to Meteor Falls to take on the former champ, Steven Stone. This is an incredibly tough battle and we'll need a good team if we're going to finish this series with a win. Either way, I think I'm considering this season a victory because we made it past the champion and this is technically post-game. I'd like to end things with a win though. We're going to need 6 final cards here and let's hope there's some good ones because this is not going to be easy. Alright, for the final battle of the Pokemon Emerald Random Card Challenge, we're going to be using the team of Tauros, Primate, Seal, Hypno, Regice, and Eevee. Regice certainly seems like a good draw, but 5 of Steven's 6 team members have super effective moves against it. This is a difficult one to judge. This team is pretty strong, but I think it's going to be close. Let's have a look at the movesets. Archie the Regice is up first at level 76, and Thunder, Amnesia, Superpower, and Blizzard make up its moveset. Fosity the Seal is up next, also at 76, with the moves Ice Beam, Rest, Waterfall, and Surf. Mears the Hypno is our 3rd level 76, and he's equipped with Headbutt, Meditate, Psychop, and Future Sight. Napier the Primeape is at level 75, and she has the moves Cross Chop, Screech, Karate Chop, and Seismic Toss. Dozer the Tauros is a couple of levels higher at 77, and he's got Strength, Scary Face, Thrash, and Fire Blast. Finally, we've got Jack of All the Eevee, and his moveset consists of Facade, Growl, Baton Pass, and Bite. Alright, this is gonna be tough. Let's give it a go. Steven sends in Skarmory to start, and we lead off with Regice. The Steel Bird struggles to find room to fly in the low cave, but manages to scatter spikes on our side of the battlefield. Regice straight up crumbles the entirety of Meteor Falls as he summons Thunder from above. The super effective strike knocks Skarmory out of the now open sky, and sparks fly as steel scrapes against stone. By stone, I mean the floor of the cavern and not Steven. You got it, it's fine. Claydol is sent in next, and now that the whole area is in ruin, feels like shaking things up some more with Earthquake. Archie attempts to hit back with Blizzard, but Shaken from the hit sends it off target. They both repeat those attacks, but this time Regice connects, and that's another one shot. Steven sends in Cradley, who also dodges Blizzard and then connects with the underground root system exposed by the Earthquake. Even after that, Regice still cannot hit with Blizzard. Cradley literally can't move as he absorbs nutrients from the ground, but Archie still manages to miss. Cradley attacks with the super effective Ancient Power, which shakes Regice, who finally connects with Blizzard for another one-hit KO. Armaldo's next up for the former champ, and with Archie's time almost up, we call for one final thunder, hoping for some big damage. It does its part as another Ancient Power takes out the legendary Ice-type, handing Steven his first win of the match. We send in Seal, who immediately attacks with Surf, knocking out Armaldo to leave us in complete control. Agron's up second to last, and another crashing Surf leaves him deep in red health. Vosity readies for a hit, but it never comes. Agron wastes his final turn taking in sunlight for a solar beam that won't be happening. Surf takes down Agron, leaving us in a 5 on 1. Alright, maybe this won't be as tough as I thought. If possible, I'd like to use the whole team here, so when Metagross enters the battle, we recall Seal to send an Eevee. Spikes and Earthquake leave Jack of all badly injured, but a miss on Meteor Mash allows him to bite the block of steel once. 
That doesn't do much, and Psychic cuts her advantage to 3. Hypno is next up on our side, but our movesets couldn't really set up well for Metagross. First Biting, now Headbutting. Mirs chips away a little bit more HP before Meteor Mash ends his battle too. We send in Primeape next, who gets the most significant hit so far with a powerful Seismic Toss, but Metagross's attack keeps rising and Meteor Mash sends Napier packing as well. Now we're down to a 2 on 1. Dozer comes in and sends a huge Fire Blast crashing into Metagross, which was our main strategy, but it survives in red health. Meteor Mash adds another victim and now it's a 1v1. Seal returns to battle and we call for Surf, but Steven, sensing a loss, uses a full restore. The wave does hit Metagross, but it isn't enough. Earthquake finishes off Fosity and we're out of usable Pokemon. Let's try that again. This run started out almost the exact same. Skarmory sent spikes flying across our side of the field and Regice counter with Thunder, but this time Skarmory tanks it to live in red health. That means an early full restore usage from Steven. I'm not sure if that will make a difference, but Archie still picks up the win without being hit. Once again, Claydol comes in second, but now Steven calls for Light Screen, which actually messes us up a bit. Blizzard isn't enough to one-shot anymore, so Claydol still gets off an Earthquake. Not ideal. Still, we're through two team members and Regice is in pretty good shape. Cradle is up third, but Archie is feeling a little bit more accurate on this attempt. Unfortunately, the Light Screen means it's another two shot, so Ancient Power lands again, but we're still doing okay. As Armaldo's special defense is boosted, we go for Super Power, but it's not great. Ancient Power finishes off Archie, and we're basically in the same situation as before. I wasn't sure if the Light Screen was about to wear off, so sent in Primeape instead of Seal. It does, so bad move, but Screech and Crosschop combine to hand Napier the victory before Armaldo can score a knockout with Aerial Ace. This is where things take a turn. As we've got Primeape in battle, Steven calls on Metagross 5th instead of Aggron. Napier strikes with Crosschop once again, almost taking Metagross below half health. Hoping to weaken the pseudo-legendary some more before relying on Fire Blast, we send an Eevee, but Meteor Mash just obliterates him. That didn't work out too well. We send in Tauros and just hope for the best. Dozer connects on Fire Blast, leaving Metagross just above red health, which is perfect as Meteor Mash hits hard. A Citrus Berry recovers some HP from Metagross before he's engulfed in flames again. I'm fairly sure that the critical hit was unnecessary, but I will absolutely take it just to make sure. That leaves Steven with only Aggron. Not wanting to risk getting hit on Switch in, we stay in with Tauros and attack with Fire Blast. It's another crit which takes Aggron below half health as he takes in sunlight yet again. Thinking Fire Blast is probably due for a miss, we call for it expecting to take the Solar Beam and bring in another Pokemon. Dozer is done playing around though. A third consecutive critical hit on Fire Blast hands us the win, but we didn't get to use our whole team. Tauros was too good. In my defense, the odds of connecting on Fire Blast three times in a row and getting a crit every time is like 1 in 7,000. I really thought Tauros was just going to faint and I could switch out. Hypno and Seal didn't get to take part, but they did in the numerous failed attempts, so I don't feel too bad. Alright, we've taken down Steven Stone. These last few episodes have had some ridiculously tough matchups, but I still think Watson wins the award for strongest opponent. That'll do it for the Pokemon Emerald Random Car Challenge. These take quite a while to set up and are probably a lot more work than they seem, but I will definitely be continuing on because I really enjoy making them. Sinnoh is up next, and that's probably the toughest region, so I'm a lot less confident, but until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.